Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of VeChain. We'll be taking a look at the latest news, having a look at some data and of course the technical analysis on the price action of VET, what's been going on most recently and where I think things are heading next. As I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And if you haven't yet joined us in Discord, what are you waiting for? Check it out. Linked in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talking crypto 24-7. It's completely free and I don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there. So why not go ahead and check it out? Let's waste no more time though. Let's jump right down into the desktop and take a look at the latest news for VeChain. Kicking things off uh, with this one here, right, which is quite an interesting one. Basically, VeChain's a Web3 for better, empowering environmental and social value creation. Um, some interesting things, right? So so VeChain introduces blockchain biosphere for sustainability, aiming to create value with an environmental and social focus. The company collaborates with Singularity Net to advance AI and blockchain powered tools. There's a few things going on here. So obviously, as you guys know, we were over in uh, Paris with VeChain, uh, kind of attending their masterclass and learning a little bit more about how their tools work, what you can build uh, on the ecosystem, talking VIPs, uh, not uh, um, as in that VIP, very important person, but the VeChain improvement um, process and you know, understanding the different kind of um, VIP ideas that are currently out there for the blockchain. And from a fundamental standpoint, you know, what that might mean pushing kind of, you know, further adoption of VeChain and all that kind of good stuff. And, um, you know, some of this stuff is is kind of obvious to us at this point, but maybe you guys have missed some of the th great things that VeChain have been building and working on. Um, but there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. Now, inside here, we can see there's obviously, you know, it's time to redefine the value of uh, or to include social and environmental needs. And we want to demonstrate how blockchain enables and supports that. So you can get some pretty cool tweets and stuff like that. Now, community uh, engagement. So VeChain's unwavering commitment to redefine value is uh, you know, palpable through its active engagement uh, with diverse communities and strategic alliances. The company has recently collaborated with Cardano and Rare Evo communities, which if you are not familiar, uh, there was a Rare Evo event recently. VeChain was over there with a few um, representatives and so forth. And for the most part, they're really kind of get involved with Cardano side of things, with uh, Singularity Net over at Rare Evo as well, um, and, and all that kind of really cool stuff. And obviously we've got Forge, uh, which is how you can basically mint uh, uh, tokens and NFTs um, on the VeChain ecosystem without really knowing code or anything like that. It's very, very intuitive, very easy to use, and all those kind of cool things. We were talking about this a lot over in Paris with VeChain um, when we were attending that masterclass, for example. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, obviously, uh, the partnership with Singularity Net, uh, which is really kind of cool stuff going on. And I'm really excited to see what that partnership brings to the future uh, when it comes to VeChain as well. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff kind of could go through. Uh, obviously, we're talking about VIPs and the categories of VIPs and all that kind of good stuff. There's so much going on with VeChain. You really have to kind of dig into this one to truly appreciate the levels of details of what the communities are trying to do. Uh, with the blockchain and you know how VeChain is enabling communities to build on that ecosystem. So really cool stuff going on. I don't want to spend this entire video just talking about uh, the ins and the outs of all of that kind of stuff, but do join us down in Discord. Uh, and of course on uh, X, where we are obviously sharing a lot more VeChain based stuff and you can get a little bit more of a flavor of what is going on there. And of course you can jump into the Discord and ask us any questions as well. Uh, obviously we are pretty au fait when it comes to VeChain um, and specifically Chris as well from a fundamental standpoint point. Um, now, when we come and take a look at like the data elements um, for VeChain, obviously current price at the point of recording, this is 1.556 cents. So it's incredibly uh, cheap in my opinion. I bought this particular um, section of coin market cap up just so that we can kind of talk through some of these basics, such as how we had that really good bull run where we saw really good value uh, for VeChain. We had a 25.11 cent high uh, in uh, April of 2021, according to coin market cap. I think it was more around the 20 27.9 on the USDT side rather than the USD side. Um, but nonetheless, you know, we're kind of split hairs at that point. 
Now, the market cap at the point of recording this video sits at $1.1 billion. It's ranked 39th. Um, and, you know, that isn't really doing it justice. I think it should be ranked higher. The circulating supply is 83.86% out there, um, $72 billion. Now, it has got a large amount of supply um, capped out at $86 billion uh, tokens. So it is an awful lot out there. So we don't expect, you know, $10, $20, $30 uh, V chain vet token pricing anytime soon. But there are some obviously uh, key numbers that we get spoken about a lot. Uh, we've even spoken about it on the channel uh, over the last year or so, or maybe even two years, where that theoretical level of $1, it's a target that many vet holders are you know aspiring to kind of uh, achieve and acquire right so there's something to kind of keep an eye, eye on um so market cap at the moment sits at 1.1 uh, billion and of course you know all that the price action is um essentially is supply and demand so if there's a good reason to see shrinkage of the supply i.e total value locked through DeFi and things like that and um, then we might see an increase in demand at the same time through new protocols that are developed on the ecosystem and again that comes down to the communities and all that kind of good stuff that we might see that really big surge in terms of price. Um, but until those things happen, we do have to be a little bit more grounded where we target out, you know, previous all-time highs, a little bit higher and all that kind of stuff. But we'll talk about that in a moment from a technical uh, analytical point of view. Um, but it's interesting to kind of keep a close eye on where the distribution is, where it sits and all that kind of stuff, which I'm still working on acquiring so that we can have more on-chain based data for VeChain. So we can take a look and analyze the different communities, how much uh, VET they hold and whether those wallets are accumulating or uh, they're just looking to take in profits and all those kind of things right so very important stuff to kind of what we are working on in the background to try to acquire so that you guys are more informed over um, v chains on chain elements and so really cool stuff going on with VeChain from a fundamental news point of view and obviously from a data point of view here as well. And I do think that's going to hopefully enhance over time as the protocol uh, develops further. And there's a few different avenues that they might uh, might go down, right? And I think there's going to be some interesting stuff potentially uh, if some of these community ideas are implemented. It could uh, could change maybe the path of a VeChain event token as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at it from an analytical point of view, starting things off with VET paired up with USDT. This is actually a futures uh, mix contract on the BitGet uh, exchange on the one hour time frame. And we're using this one here just so we can kind of see, you know, what's been going on most recently. Now, from our standpoint here, we are getting heavily rejected on the 200 EMA on the hourly chart here. And that is the white line, as you can kind of see just coming through here. Now, the red line is the 50 EMA. And we are also below there as we've recently, just in the last couple of hours, seen a nice pump to the upside, but also a rejection on that 200 EMA. It's not looking overly strong right now. Now, as we kind of take a look at this from an Elliott Wave theory point of view, we can kind of analyze this and say, okay, well, we were expecting a bit of a move to the upside and we actually just fell short of our target. So that's actually pretty reasonable to expect this to maybe be considered done at this point. We would have targeted out 1.581 to 1.595 and we actually wicked up to the high of 1.539. So I'm quite happy to say that we are pretty much there or thereabouts. So it's possible that we come up a little bit more if we needed to, but for the most part, it looks like it's actually done. Now, this means that we are expecting our move to the downside to occur. Okay, we've had this initial surge and now we're potentially starting the next pattern. And it does look like there's potential here for a bit of a move to the upside a little bit further. So it still could be possible that we hit into this C wave high target, but with the path that we get there or take to get there could be potentially slightly different. So we think equilibrium is the area that we might see a small wick move to the upside on, um, but that's it. I don't think there's actually much more outside of this little range, essentially between 1.581 and 1.595. Um, and therefore we can potentially look at deeper moves to the downside, but I wouldn't expect to do that just right away. I could be wrong on that um, because this is a very vol volatile market uh, at times. Taking it into the daily time frame, you can see that the it, there is this idea of a bigger move across the daily uh, structure for a larger move upwards, right? And this is targeting out 2.361 to 2.6. Four, eight. This is a corrective pattern uh, that would essentially take us right back up to the fair value gap that was created over in April of 2023. 
Okay, so we can see this and acknowledge that there is this idea of a slight move higher. Not a guarantee, because as you can kind of see, we do not have a large amount of information or data available to us. So this, in my opinion, is a long shot, but it's something that we need to consider. The stochastic RSI is showing us with momentum that would support this move to the upside. So it's not too far-fetched to think of this as something that can happen. And I do think that for the most part, many of these other altcoins that have been coming down quite aggressively recently are also looking poised for a bit of a move to the upside alongside Bitcoin, looking for a small corrective structure upwards as well. This could be where we take advantage of that upward momentum with Bitcoin, and many of these altcoins follow that, but has slightly higher percentages uh, to the upside, as in they kind of grab these higher ranges and then they get rejected with Bitcoin as Bitcoin may reject, reject later on. So small move upwards, uh, that's actually quite a nice move. I mean, we're talking about 50%. And um, so it's not a small move by any stretch of the imagination from a percentage point of view. But from the grander scheme of things, if we take a look at the weekly, it will be very, very minor, a blip on the radar in comparison. And I still suspect that we have further downside and new bear market lows for VeChain on that weekly time frame. So we're not yet where we need to be, essentially. You can see that here that we are below the 50 and 200 weekly EMAs, and uh, we are still going down quite aggressively. So for now, with our stochastic RSI not yet oversold, I suspect that the weekly time frame is an has given us an indication that we are to expect further downside. But of course, you know we'll have to keep a close eye on those smaller time frames as well because there are some profits to be made uh, to the upside before obviously going and taking a bigger short position to the downside. So for the most part, it's looking okay. It's nothing to worry. I do suspect that we have a move down towards the 0.00811 to 0 0.01065. Uh, this is a previous area of resistance and uh, that had turned into support that I'm thinking could potentially be our next support range for VeChain. So it's going to be an interesting one. Of course, if we do come down this low, our higher range targets are actually way up here, guys, at $1.43 on the low side. Like I said, though, there are some interesting zones that we'd have to tackle first. For starters, we have the 19.8 cent, uh, 0.618 Fib scale. That's going to be a key area for us as well. Um, and alongside the 47.42. So for me, I would want to see how price reacts into this area, basically between 19 and 47 cent. Uh, if we're able to see really good, strong progression with impulsive based Elliott wave patterns, then we might be able to target out that $1 to $1.43 area. Um, but, you know, again, we want to be really cautious with the idea of thinking that we can go to that dollar until we see a little bit more um, from the fundamental side with how VeChain is potentially handling things. Um, and I don't mean like how they are handling them in the sense that uh, there's issues or anything like that. But what I mean is the communities that are building on the uh, actual blockchain itself is to see what gets built and whether or not those uh, th those dApps that are being built bring the extra demand in, you know, they bring the people to the ecosystem so that we can see you know, the supply and the demand imbalance so that we can get that nice big moonshot that we're all dreaming of, right? And so um, we need to see you know, how those communities build and how they kind of uh, develop on chain uh, for the ecosystem. And if we can see a lot more of that specifically with you know, VUSD and the stable coins and the, the potential growth when it comes to DeFi, then we, we stand a really good chance at potentially you know, seeing a really nice... A, um, you know, run to the upside on on the VET token. And of course, there's many different paths that VeChain could take as well. And the community have many different ideas around uh, how they can improve uh, the VeChain uh, ecosystem in itself, you know, through developments and various different things. So there's a lot of different ways that this could play out. So it's a bit too soon to really know for certain. But there's some interesting targets here from an Elliott Wave theory point of view that kind of allow us to kind of get a good idea as to where the future uh, potential lies when it comes to VET. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. And do you think uh, VeChain's VET uh, token can reach a dollar? Uh, yes or no? Let me know in the comments. If you found this useful, smash the like button. If you're new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe? Don't forget to join us down in Discord and I'll catch you all in the next one.